Roma back with five unsuccessful TV pilots. Yes, five more. Here comes Tobor. 1956 was a proposed American science fiction television series envisioned as a spin-off from the 1954 film Tobor the Great. This 26-minute pilot, helmed by producer Richard Goldstone, featured a script by Arnold Belgard and a direction by Duke Goldstone. Unfortunately, the series never made it to air and only a pilot was ever filmed. And Tobor is so named because that robot backwards, isn't it? That Tobor is quite a kid, too. How does he work? ESP. Tobor has a built-in extrasensory perception. Come on, Tobor! Yes, Admiral, I'm sure this situation ties up with Operation Round Trip. We've got to get word to Tommy. Give me a bigger wrench. Meet Scott Turner Jr., played by Josh Peck, a rookie U.S. Marshal and son of the late Scott Turner, who was Tom Hanks, of course. Initially, Scott Jr. is portrayed as a compulsive neat freak, driven by a keen desire to climb the career ladder. However, his tidy world takes an unexpected turn when he is saddled with an unexpected and messy companion. Hooch! Sounds familiar, doesn't it? The classic buddy cop slapstick trope takes centre stage maintaining a tone that appeals to both newcomers and long-time fans of the original film, of course. But the series itself doesn't really overly rely on nostalgia like a lot of them would. It doesn't bank on specific references or nods to the 1989 film. about you you kidding cypress beach is a virtual hotbed of criminal activity in fact my day'd be a lot easier if i could just leave Pooch with you oh no 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 oh no 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 you know put him up Pooch. bro i've been slowing trying to give you a mud on a leash man i got lost yeah i know in this riveting tale of the ultimate imposter a covert operative undergoes a unique form of training where his brain is intricately linked to a cutting edge computer system the story unfolds as he is entrusted with a crucial mission rescuing a russian submarine commander the said commander a defector holding vital secrets has fallen into the clutches of an opposing agent the storyline is a blend of espionage and tech sci-fi sort of stuff as the secret agent delves into the heart of the mission and I think what they were going for here is that he's linked to this computer so that he can instantly have any piece of information put into his head, speak any language, know anything about any topic, which means he can take on really high-stakes missions with a pretty much guarantee of success. The Chinese are giving secret agent Frank Moynihan back to the United States. Unfortunately, they're keeping his memory. Frank. Frank, what's the matter? Is that my name? Why can't he remember who he is or who we are? He's more receptive to learning from the Alpha computer than any man on Earth. The data, now converted into a language the brain can understand, is transmitted into your brain on a very low-frequency energy called the Alpha-10 wavelength. I'm sending Monaghan to the Paris compound. Are you serious? You know anyone else who can learn to be a mechanic for an English racing car? And also learn how to get to that Russian and Parrot's compound in 23 hours. Now, America's most unusual secret agent must race against time before his computer-enhanced knowledge wears off. Join Joseph Hacker, Aaron Gray, Keith Andes, and Macon McCallum for the fast-paced adventures of The Ultimate Imposter. The People. A sci-fi TV movie from 1972. It made its debut as an ABC movie of the week. It's based primarily on Zena Henderson's novella, Potage. 
And the story weaves in elements from Henderson's stories Ararat, Gilead and Captivity. The star-studded cast includes Kim Darby, William Shatner, Diane Vasey, Laurie Walters and Dan O'Hurley. However you say that name, O'Hurley-hy, O'Hurley-hy. That's what time Irish people get up for work, or hurly he. With Derby and Shatner previously sharing the screen in the Star Trek episode, Miri. The plot revolves around Melodyne Amerson, a young teacher venturing into a remote area of work with a community of individuals who have purposefully distanced themselves from mainstream civilization. This isolated group resembles the Amish, of course, a religious commune sort of thing, maintaining a mysterious and independent lifestyle. Melodyne, initially unnerved by the secretive behaviour of her students, faces the challenge of proposing activities that are met with strict prohibitions. This box contains the Bendo School Band. And I've got instruments for everyone. All right, Karen. What is it? It's just it's against our ways, Miss Emerson. Music, <laughs> too? Yes. We didn't have a chance to introduce ourselves in the middle of the crisis. I assumed you were the new school teacher. I guess it's pretty obvious what I do around there. Curtis. Uh, Melody Amerson. <laughs> LAX 2194 attempted to ride the wave of Matthew Perry's signature deadpan style, envisioning a sitcom that unfortunately never took flight. Despite Perry's decade-long stint as a seasoned industry actor at the time, he had yet to land a massive mainstream hit, and the prospect of LAX 2194 emerged as a golden opportunity for Perry to take centre stage in a new ABC sitcom. However, fate had other plans, and the series faced a swift cancellation, opening the door, however, for Perry to stumble upon the role of a lifetime, as friend's sarcastic Chandler Bing. This pilot was set in the futuristic year of oh, 2194, of course, and centred around the daily escapades of the baggage claim handlers at Los Angeles International Airport. How could you be so heartless? Oh, sure. Call me heartless just because I'm half organism, half machine, and don't actually have a heart. <laughs> I got the big essential fluids, Pumpy. I want to be every woman's fantasy. <laughs> you know, we can transform matter, bring back the daddy, we can even fly at 17,000 miles per hour. You'd think somebody would invent a vending machine that wouldn't want to make you do this. <laughs> and there you have it, there's five more pilots that didn't make it to series. Did I miss any out? You will let me know in the comments below. Hit the like button, please. Give the video a thumbs up. It really does help the channel to succeed. But frankly, not only succeed, it's pretty much life and death that the video gets actually noticed by somebody else. So please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already. Share this video with your friends and all that good YouTube stuff. Bye for now.